Hello, my name is Brendan Mern. I'm a sales engineer here at Data.World, and I'm thankful to have the opportunity today to talk to you about why Data.World is the best enterprise data catalog. During this 15-minute session, we'll cover a list of preset topics provided to us by the CDO TechFent hosts. We'll start with how Data.World doesn't just have a unique offering, we have a unique company background, and that helps drive our strong company culture and enterprise data catalog offering. Next, we'll talk about our key product differentiators and how our modern cataloging approach helps set us apart from a traditional legacy data catalog. We'll spend quite a bit of time in the actual product today within the demo character's shoes, Alicia, and that'll help the audience better picture the data-driven culture that our product fosters and how it can benefit their team. Then we'll wrap up with our public transparent pricing model and partnership-driven support model. Not only does Data.World's product stand out, our company stands out. Data.World was founded in 2015 as a public benefit corporation with the mission to build the most meaningful, collaborative, abundant data resource in the world. We are also a sort of certified B Corp, which means we meet the highest standards of verified social and environmental performance, public transparency, and legal accountability to balance profit and purpose. Data.World is designed for modern data enterprises that want to be more data-driven. We bring data producers and data consumers together to build a culture of data. Our enterprise catalog centralizes data discovery, governance, access, and analysis in one shared, easy-to-use resource. We help make data discovery and analysis easy, truly democratizing data access throughout your organization. There are four key product differentiators that make Data.World stand out from other enterprise data catalogs. Data.World is the first and only cloud-native SaaS data catalog designed to minimize management overhead, maximize availability and portability, and deliver a continuous delivery cycle. Second, Data.World is built on a knowledge graph for enhanced data discovery, a resilient data footprint, and AI-based product development. Knowledge graphs bridge the gap between how data consumers understand their business world and how companies store the data. They are unique in that business terminology is represented as concepts and relationships that are both understandable by people and machines in the exact same way. The third differentiator is that Data.World can connect to and query live data across disparate sources via data virtualization and federated query. More than a simple query workbench for a single data warehouse, this allows you to explore and join data across a variety of sources in a virtualized manner, a proprietary capability of ours. Finally, Data.World is the most flexible, extensible catalog on the market. When building Data.World, we focused heavily on utilizing open standards to enable Data.World to be the most flexible catalog without proprietary lockout and, without, and with an open knowledge graph backend enabling your data engineers to extend catalog functionality way beyond their expectations. We have the ability to model any type of asset, not just traditional relational sources, and integrate across the entire data stack from your BI tools, metadata collectors, data lakes, warehouses, ML and analytic tools. Because of our open API, it's quick and easy to build your own new connections to your favorite data tools, so you don't have to wait months for a new integration with the other non-cloud native data catalogs. So with that, let's hop into the platform, get hands on, and show why data.world is the best enterprise data catalog. Okay, so we are logged into the data.world platform, um, already delivering on our promise of being as accessible and portable as possible. Uh, we can be accessed through any modern web browser. So here, Alicia Austin, our demo character who works at Inatech, has opened her web browser, visited the URL data.world, performed single sign-on, and now she's looking at the front page of her catalog. Uh, this is obviously a fully baked instance. All the metadata has been curated. So just to discuss the, te uh, the steps to get there, uh, what we're looking at now, uh, part of that cloud native SaaS offering, there's no server to stand up. We are fully managed and hosted on our end. So all you have to do is visit the URL. Once you do that, you have two different ways to collect your metadata and load it into the catalog. You can use our connection manager shown on screen now, where you can add these connections to your favorite data warehouse or BI tool, 
uh, set up the authentication details, schedule that collection, and it'll run automatically based on your desired frequency. Uh, many of our customers choose our second option as well, which has a little more flexibility because it's a command line interface where you can then schedule that. It's operating system agnostic, so it can run from Mac, Windows, Linux, VM, anything. You schedule it through the command line interface, connect it to our well-documented REST APIs, and schedule that upload of the metadata into the catalog, again, on your desired frequency. Uh, if Alicia, first time she enters the catalog, wants any help around this information, she can use our native help docs here and use some introductory docs on how to get started, help center to get specifics on collecting metadata from specific data warehouses or sources, and contact support if she needs a little extra help. So clicking into the fully baked uh, curated environment here, we have some things to discuss as far as the front page. Right away, you'll notice we have a very consumer grade user experience. We really like to bring both technical and non-technical colleagues into the platform. You'll see that on our front page and navigation of the metadata environment and data environment. And it's really important to provide value to both types of catalog users so we can have everyone using the data, democratizing that data access and building that data-driven culture. So right away, we have this activity timeline feed in the middle where Alicia can get a better idea who is doing what with data on her various teams. So we can click to the Inatech team to focus that timeline and give her an additional level of visibility into uh, who's doing what with the data beyond the typical searching and browsing function. Of course, we do have a browsing function here and we have a powerful Google-like knowledge graph search up top here, which we'll show off now. So we're gonna pretend that Alicia has been tasked by her manager to do some analysis around customer order data. She can click up to the search bar, type in her keyword of order, hitting enter brings her to a full semantic search page. So here we have all the hits in the catalog from the keyword of order. You can see we searched the glossary, the tables and columns, and the BI tools. Uh, right away in the top, you can see that our social layer is searchable as well. So if someone mentioned Alicia in a comment, get to this before Monday and it's Friday evening or Sunday evening and she's thinking, where was that said? She can search for that actual comment uh, please get to this before Monday and find it on our knowledge graph. On the left-hand side here, we have some facets that we have. Uh, a lot of our catalog is fully configurable, uh, but that is also part of each standard package comes with our support of our customer success team to configure that for you. So they provide the data best practices and configure even custom knowledge graph metadata tagging and faceting like this popularity metric here. Alicia can click popular which basically monitors page views on our extensible metrics I'll show in this exact demo. And that is a way you can query that and programmatically augment your metadata with custom tagging. So here we have a popular order term that Alicia can click into. Now we're in the glossary. We have the title, of course, description of what an order is, some disambiguating definitions on what it isn't. As we scroll down, we can see a calculation here on how this order is defined according to specific columns in the data warehouse we can link to. And we also have this relationship section. So here, at least you can see, you know, what an order is, what it's not above, and then more specific definitions online and retail. Uh, she can see some metrics, part of that calculation. You'll notice this suggest changes button is everywhere. So if Alicia wants to participate in the metadata, the metadata environment, this is how we bring her in to do so and really stay engaged. The analysts are oftentimes the first line of defense and they notice when something's out of date. Even though they're not the steward, we want to leverage that wisdom of the analyst crowd, of the end user crowd, and have them participate in the metadata environment. So she can suggest this change here. Maybe she created a orders dashboard that she'd like to add to this orders term. She can click add there and now she's suggested a change. I think this should be here. We'll give a response with a typo in it. It's a demo. And so now we have the description or the su suggestion listed up here, suggestion here. Uh, what that does is the, the analyst crowd can, or the data end consumer that aren't stewards can suggest changes. You can see that's here. And now that goes to one of the approvers of the org. They'll get a notification in the top right here or over here. They also get email notifications. We have a Slack integrations, webhooks, and other tools like Teams. The takeaway here is that we can meet your colleagues where they live in their day-to-day -day habits, and that really fosters adoption of the tool, which is what Data.World excels at and is the common thread amongst successful catalog ventures. So here we can see our request has been approved. So we can revisit that order page. And now as we scroll down, 
the relationship is there and someone who then visits this order term in the glossary can click to this order totals by state tableau dashboard and view the content here. So the takeaways in this is we can relate your BI tools and your data warehouse tables through the glossary all together. Uh, it creates the full metadata map. Right away at the top, we have this view tableau dashboard button. This is an external link where you can click and view it. Or if you wanna just look here, you can see maybe this isn't quite what you're looking for. Don't even have to click that link you saw based on the preview image. Maybe you're emailed this dashboard, you wanna see how it relates to the other environments. You can click to the glossary or you could click into the data environment and see the data that is feeding this Tableau dashboard. Here we have a snowflake table we've collected. Uh, right away, I'll cover the new things. We have a little more in this more information section. This is fully configurable, whatever you'd like to add here, uh, we can walk you through um, many different fields. Even our data layer can augment uh, the metadata environment as well. Uh, part of the, having that data layer next to the metadata environment with the open extensible knowledge graph creates a very powerful triumvirate there of tools. And I can show you that right now, actually. So as I scroll down, you'll see we have the columns in this table listed. Uh, maybe I want to do some analysis of this customer ID field, but there's a warning on it coming through. So I can click here and see what's behind that. Here is where we have some queries that the steward wrote, uh, able to customize a, uh, a custom data monitoring query here where we have uh, an issue where customer ID field in retail order must have full overlap of the master customer table. And so the steward, you know, you have traditional data quality tools which we support with those traditional metrics, accuracy, completeness, but really oftentimes the steward of a field or table knows specifically what needs to be matching to make the data even rational. And so here it's that customer ID overlap rate you can write a query to monitor that. You can actually even list out the ones that don't overlap and then hit see all and open with as you'll see later in the demo to further explore that. So also in addition to those uh, you know, extra custom data rules or, or, or data monitoring queries you can add into these column pages or anywhere, even this table or a glossary page if it's appropriate. As we scroll down, we also have data lineage. So here, this is our business-friendly abstract lineage. This is another deliberate UI choice of ours. We do have full field-level technical transformation lineage available, deep linked into our platform here. But what we do is we distill it down on this front page of the catalog to have it more accessible, have more users use it. Uh, we found that the field-level lineage viewer oftentimes only gets clicked into by data engineers when something's broken but we think lineage can serve a wider purpose than that. And so Alicia on this page, if she wants to just quickly scroll down and glance at the lineage, see where she's at, maybe her manager said, grab the one that flows from online order or the one that flows into the orders Tableau data set or Tableau uh, embedded data source. She can glance at this and get a very quick view of that. Maybe she is certain now that she's in the right spot. She can jump into our data layer and actually request access to data directly from the catalog. So now we're on a data set here uh, as Alicia here, I'm gonna request access. I'll put demo in there. That is a fully configurable form where you can add you know, how long you need access, why you need it, and have that all flow through to our metrics. Uh, but for Alicia here, she can just request access to that data set. And now on my approver window, I can approve that request. So now you can see that she has a notification here that she's able to uh, access this data set. So now when she visits it, this request access button has jumped to explore this data set. And what she did there was she actually requested access through the catalog and having the metadata next to your data layer and tracking that use gives you last mile governance, which is very valuable in monitoring the use of your data. Many catalogs that have this button will just put it in a shopping cart, send off an email, which creates a new ticket. This is actually provisioned directly through the catalog. So while you have the metrics around your metadata, which is the plan for how your data needs to be used, you also have the metrics around queries against your data and access to your data. So you can ensure that the execution of that plan is aligned with the actual plan delineated in the metadata. Our data layer, beyond just provisioning access directly through it, clicking here to explore this data set, or <laughs> data set I can show you just some examples of a table here, um, you know, a query that we wrote that you can surface on the front page. So this is a traditional um, you know, SQL workbench with download feature if you enable it or robust open with functionality. So this is about that built on open standards, 
Uh, we have very robust open width to meet your colleagues again in their habits and ensuring adoption of the tool. Clicking to the front page of this data set, we can show how that query can be useful to someone who might not be comfortable running SQL. Maybe I'm a non-technical colleague who searched the glossary, clicked through to this data set, requested access. I can actually pull orders by date using this templated query that I showed previously uh, coded on the data layer there. So I can come in here and enter a date hitting enter, pulls the orders for that date, runs that query based on that variable. And now I can see all and use those open with functionalities, open with PowerPoint, Excel, et cetera. Also, we have data profiling. As I scroll down here, you can see that we profile the data. Uh, this is our live connection to our Snowflake data warehouse. Maybe Alicia wants to do some analysis around the shipping field. She can click here and get some profiling stats of sample values, distinct, empty, min, mean, max, uh, maybe she wants to use the date from this table. She can click this and see if there are any dates missing. Maybe it's missing a year. It doesn't span far enough in the past. Also, if she wants to join detail on this, maybe customer ID, she wants to join customer data. She can scroll down and see related data sets. If other people who have similar access to her have joined data sets together with this one, we have this curated AIML list here, and it can predict oftentimes uh, data people are looking for when they're already on a data set ready to combine it with something. Uh, speaking of combining data sets, once you have these curated, you can combine them into these projects. So I can click into one of these projects and we have this high revenue customer spending report. The takeaway here, I'll pull away the front page with this launch workspace to show that is very similar to the data set section, but we have connected data sets here and there are multiple ones listed. So we have multiple data sets that we can then query together in a federated manner and have this well curated front page project, which is a great way to communicate results with a full paper trail. We have live queries in here. Uh, you can click to these queries. We have visualization tools and you can at mention stakeholders to take next steps. So once you have the data layer working in conjunction with the metadata layer, you can monitor a lot of that activity, that last mile governance. And the way you do that is through this metrics data set. So we have this metri metrics data set we provide. Uh, this is part of that open extensible knowledge graph backend. Uh, you can write any queries against the knowledge graph and pull information from your metadata or data in the catalog. However, here these are provided out of the box as some standard ones for all our customers. We have authorization requests, who's requesting access to what. We have downloads, maybe you wanna find uh, you know, potential misuse. For governance, we have page views here. This is what we're querying. You can add a query to uh, configure a popularity score and then overlay that on your metadata using the flexible knowledge graph. Uh, you wanna monitor queries, searches. So you wanna find maybe who has successful searches and who doesn't have successful searches as far as certain keywords, not who, but based on keyword to better curate that environment for self-service. As well as we have resources metadata, which is a popular one with our customers. You can see the full state of your uh, metadata in the knowledge graph. You can see the type of resources, ID, title, description, any custom fields you define can be queried there as well. So you can do dashboarding on top of that. Some examples of that dashboarding can be this query popularity log where it's a similar situation as that project, but we're doing some dashboarding as far as what tables are most popular, how often are they queried, and then URLs to go jump to that table and find uh, these popular or non-popular data sets if you want to flip that as well. Stewarding governance model, you can use that resources metadata table to pull everything that's lacking a steward. And then you can at mention and assign people to take next steps. So here we're assigning the analyst team and BI team to take steps on the data tables or glossary and BI catalog resources that are missing a steward. So now if we hop over to pricing, so here we are on our public pricing page, data.world slash pricing. It's available to everyone. Uh, data.world is committed to fair and transparent pricing. So all of our prices are listed on our website with packages starting at $50,000. 10 users are included in each tier with the option to purchase additional users for $33 per user per month. Uh, bulk user pricing is also available. It scales down as you add more users. Other vendors treat software, as success, software and success as two entirely separate enterprises. We see them as one intertwined, strengthening our partnership. That's why customer success and support 
are complementary with all standard catalog plans. Your catalog success team is here to help you win. We work with you to identify use cases that deliver the shortest time to value and back it up with metrics no other catalog can provide. Your success is so important to us. Everyone on our team, including the CEO, is bonused on data catalog adoption. So you might have noticed that from my demo, we focus on adoption, even with our pricing, even with our internal bonusing. We're a very unique company. I hope you enjoyed the demo today. Uh, I think we have the best catalog in the market. I hope you agree with me. Thanks for watching.